नमस्कार वेलकम टू अनदर एपिसोड ऑफ एडिटोरियल एंड आई गॉट टू टॉपिक्स फॉर यू टुडे इन फैक्ट थ्री माय फर्स्ट टॉपिक इज अबाउट ऑफ कोर्स द इनोग्रेशन ऑफ इंडियाज न्यू पार्लियामेंट हाउस दैट विल बी माय फर्स्ट टॉपिक वील टॉक अ लिटिल अबाउट इट मे बी एंड मिनट और टू देन वील टॉक अबाउट द रेस्टलेस एंड देर अरेस्ट ये नाइट in fact yesterday they were released yesterday night we'll talk about that and the last topic that i want to discuss with you is uh, delimitation will the south get equal prominence or, or equal say in the indian parliament that's the question we'd like to ask tonight let's get right into the show so um, after a lot of fanfare after a lot of uh, lot of traditional uh, uh, rituals and all of that the parliament new parliament was inaugurated it was inaugurated by the prime minister of india mr narendra modi on the question of uh, it should have been actually inaugurated by the by the president of india well i mean prime minister i don't think uh, gave it too much of importance so he went ahead and inaugurated while the president says that listen you know what i am very happy that the prime minister inaugurated the parliament house so as far as she is concerned she is good now um, why is inauguration so important why did the why are the political parties so 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 keen that you know uh, it should have been president murmu who is inaugurating the structure rather than prime minister now the fact is um, apart from a lot of things we spoke protocol head of the state and all of that see what also happens is this goes into the history into the history of india even after 100 years people will talk about the new parliament and people will talk about how prime minister narendra modi inaugurated that parliament house how we got the shingol how we got that uh, scepter how uh, uh, all the saints came from south and you know there was this huge traditional function all of this is going to be spoken about narendra modi will be now confirmed in the in the pages of history of india he will never be forgotten till that parliament house stands there he will never be forgotten now would a prime minister lose an opportunity like this so that's possibly why he was very insistent that he will be the one who is inaugurating it so that's one now what the opposition and what i don't know what the opposition is saying but what a lot of other people say people uh, academicians and and uh, and intelligentsia say is that you see after 100 years the world not after 100 years right now or through 100 years the world would have realized that indian parliament was inaugurated by a woman indian parliament was inaugurated by a woman and that too a woman from a scheduled tribe that would have been something that india would have been very proud of well that was uh, one uh, that was one way of thinking it uh, mr modi had one way of thinking another way of thinking and uh, that's what happened yesterday uh, as far as the inauguration is concerned as far as the hindu rituals are concerned as a person as a human being i would prefer parliament especially parliament of a secular country like ours to be kept away from religious traditions religious functions it should be a more democratic function it is a democratic festival rather than a religious festival i would have seen it that way but then i am a minority maybe in my thinking and uh, end of the day it was a it was a it was a very lavish event big event uh, quite uh, widely covered the prime minister of course was uh, the center stage of the event as normally it is and uh, especially normally uh, when it comes to mr narendra modi and he was in the center stage of course this time around even mr om birla got an opportunity to be seen in the entire function that too was uh, kind of interesting so that's what i would say about the inauguration of parliament house i don't have anything much to say about it i have spoken a lot about it so let's go to our next topic which is the wrestlers the wrestlers wanted to come to the new parliament house and protest in front of the new parliament house 
in the process sakshi malik and bajrang punia were detained on sunday and they were left sunday night yesterday night they were they were let go but they were arrested police also cleared out their protest site in delhi but the wrestler says clear out or no clear out we are going to come and we are going to protest again okay now this is where it stands the debate is uh, नहीं करना चाहिए था रेस्लर्स को क्यों वाई डे हैव टू गो टू न्यू पार्लियामेंट हाउस वाई डे हैव टू गो टू न्यू पार्लियामेंट हाउस एंड क्रिएट अ प्रॉब्लम सच अ बिग इवेंट हैपनिंग सच अ नेशनल इवेंट हैपनिंग इवेंट ऑफ सच नेशनल इंपॉर्टेंस नेशनल क्यों इंटरनेशनल इंपॉर्टेंस इट्स वर्ल्ड लार्जेस्ट डेमोक्रेसी ओपनिंग ऑफ देयर टेम्पल ऑफ डेमोक्रेसी देयर पार्लियामेंट हाउस सो या आई मीन इट इज ऑफ इंटरनेशनल इंपॉर्टेंस वाई शुड दे कम देयर so when they come there the police is going to 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 kind of uh, to kind of uh, take action in fact uh, you know i was very surprised to ha huh, i was very surprised to read a comment of a former dgp of kerala nc astana who engaged in a heated online spar after the latter warned if it requires the cops will resort to firing bullets at the protesting uh, wrestlers if need be a cop DGP N C Astana saying former DGP retired. Okay, <laughs> so while uh, you know there is a lot of reaction as to you know, why they are doing it and all that, a lot of people say, yeah, okay, they wanted to protest. Protest is the right of an Indian citizen. They wanted to protest. They wanted to go there and protest. They would be heard there. The the world would see them. So that is why they went there. Okay, that is one end of the story. Let's keep that aside. I wonder why why nobody. <laughs> is asking a very simple question the simple question is these girls allege sexual harassment these girls allege sexual harassment why is the person who they alleged still uh, roaming free why is he not arrested so far the police have registered two cases against uh, mr bridge bhushan singh the head of uh, Uh, Indian Wrestling Federation, who is alleged, who these girls allege of uh, sexual harassment, they say that the police have filed two cases against Mr. Singh, including one under India's Pakso. Pakso is protection of ch child from sexual offence. Pakso case, and the man is roaming free. He says that you know law has been misused. He has been questioned by the police, but not arrested. Why? Why is my question? Why is this happening? Is this fair? if it was our daughters this all started in january january february march april may june nothing happens to that man that man is roaming around how would you feel how would, how are those girls feeling you see frustration makes you do things and the fact is a uh, empathetic government empathetic society understands frustration especially A girl's frustration when that girl thinks she is violated. Forget world-class wrestlers. Forget they are. They are world-class wrestlers. They are medal-winning wrestlers. They are. They have these girls. These kids have made India proud. Forget all of that. Forget all of that for a minute. These girls allege that they have been violated, and we have just called the person. It took them almost three to four months to get a case registered registered against uh, the the perpetrator. a simple fir registered against the perpetrator and now he has been called for questioning and that's it that's why they are they are there because they don't trust the government to act that is why they are acting had the government acted in a timely fashion do you think they would have risked their careers and come to the streets do you think they would have they have their careers in front of them illustrious career in front of them so many more medals to win these young wrestlers they have sacrificed all of that and is today on the streets in delhi do you think these girls would have done it i am nobody to say that you know therefore uh, bridge bhushan uh, whatever bridge bhushan singh has perpetrated he is he is a criminal i am not saying all that i don't know law has to figure that out investigate it and and, the, and a judge has to say that but all i am saying is that why are our kids beti padhao beti bachao why are our kids not sure about the fact that they will get justice and the fact that they are not sure that they will get justice that's precisely why they are in that road because they are not there they are not going to fight any elections
In fact, they have to prepare for their competition. They are wrestlers for crying out loud. One of the best in the world. My question is, why are they having, why are they insecure? Aren't we responsible for it? And if those kids are insecure and they want to be heard, are you going to arrest them? Is that fair? Think about it. Think about it. Let me know on your comments below. Let's get into our next topic. I wanted to talk to you about delimitation. Delimitation and the problem that delimitation could have in the future. Now, I do not have enough time left with me, I guess, in this show to talk about delimitation in, in, in details. I've done a show on delimitation. I will do one again day after tomorrow. I will do it at length. I will give you every parameter under which that this delimitation is going to be done and, and all of that. I'll give you all the details. Okay, but today I just want to leave you with a thought. Let me first tell you the concept of delimitation. See, in India, delimitation commission has been constituted four times. One in 1952 under the delimitation act of 1952. In 1963 under the delimitation act of 1962. In 1973 under the delimitation act of 1972. And in 2002, under the Delimitation Act of 2002. So, four times we have set up a Delimitation Commission. Now, this Delimitation Commission is very powerful. It is powerful than everybody. You can't take Delimitation Commission to court and all that. And say, hey, no, no, it's not seat new, it's not seat new, and all that. So, they are very powerful. And um, this Delimitation uh, Commission is again now going to redefine how many seats will be there in our parliament. In fact, people say that we are looking at something like 886 seats in the parliament from 543 to 886. Lot of figures are floating around. Lot of figures are floating around uh, about the number of seats that are there uh, and you know what uh, each state is going to get. Lot of people say a lot of, uh, throw a lot of numbers. Now it is not necessary those numbers are right. It is not necessary for the simple reason that those numbers are being calculated. A lot of calculations are yet pending. So it is going to take a little more time for us to get to know the real figures. But there is a worry and that's the worry and that's the thought I want to leave you with. The worry is that South anyway feels deprived of being, you know, of being an absolute equal partner in this entire picture in India. They don't get equal representation. South do not get equal representation. States like Uttar Pradesh, states like Bihar, states like Madhya Pradesh, states like Rajasthan and now Maharashtra. They have a fairly great say when it comes to uh, the Lok Sabha. South doesn't have that kind of say. Now the fact remains that the reason is because South population doesn't grow as much as North population does. That's good, isn't it? That's good. If you're controlling a population, that's good, isn't it? Can you penalize South because of that? Is that fair? So the fact is, when delimitation happens now, will South be further delimited, <laughs> you know, further, further uh, uh, irrelevant in the national scenario? That's the worry that Southern states are facing currently. So my request is, when we talk about delimitation, when we think about delimitation, while there are standard rules and, and, uh, and norms prescribed uh, uh, in delimitation, what I would urge is to ensure that every part of the country, whether it is north, whether it is south, whether it is east, whether it is west, feels that they are participating in the country's decision making process. That is the Lok Sabha. That participation is going to be very important. And the participation is not, if, if the participation is not there, then we have a problem. And that problem will aggravate uh, uh, more if uh, you know you are reducing the participation, you are reducing the, the, the strength in the Lok Sabha, you are reducing uh, South strength in the Lok Sabha. You see currently out of uh, 543, South has 129 seats out of 543. Uh, North that is Rajasthan, Madhya Pradesh, Bihar, Uttar Pradesh together has 174 seats out of 543 seats and the rest of India has 240 uh, out of the 543 seats. So 174 North, rest of India 240 and South 129. 
Is it balanced? Not really. But as on now, it's okay. It's still okay. But if that, this is reduced further, then we have a problem. And that's the problem one is worried about. So that's the point I wanted to make. Uh, Till I see you next time and, and like I told you, I will do a special editorial on delimitation. Uh, do see that, do watch it if you have, if you get the time. I'll do a special uh, editorial on this, till you, but till I see you next time. That's tomorrow at 10. Namaskar.